Day two is part of the forming section of the creation week. God uh, first creates an earth that's formless and void and dark. He creates light. He makes light to illuminate the dark world. Then he begins to form it. And then once it's formed, he begins to fill it. And the first act of forming, you could say, is the creation of light and the separation of light and darkness. But then he creates the firmament and inserts the firmament between the waters above and the waters below. And that forms an above and below. It forms a, a world where there are waters in heaven and there are waters on earth. And that distinction runs through the entire Bible. Uh, when people go into heaven, they see a sea of glass in front of God's throne. Uh, and those are the heavenly waters. Sometimes the heavenly waters come down. We have a distinction in Exodus between the land that Israel was going into and Egypt, where they came from. And the distinction is made in terms of waters above and waters below. Uh, the rain from heaven, God waters the, the land, the land of Canaan that Israel is entering, rather than water coming up from the Nile, groundwater arising from below to water the land of Egypt. They're going to get water from heaven that's going to water their own land. So uh, the first form that we have in the creation is this distinction between uh, the waters above and the waters below. The Hebrew term for the firmament is rakia, which means something that's beaten out, beaten flat. It's used to describe a piece of metal, for example, that's beaten into a sheet. And at least that's the, that's the appearance that uh, the firmament has. If we look up to the sky, we look at a dome. That's the firmament. And it looks like a piece of blue material, solid material that's been beaten flat. But when we actually look at the rest of the creation week, we see that the firmament is not just that barrier. The firmament has depth. It is a barrier, but it has depth. We know this from day four when God inserts into the firmament the sun, moon, and the stars. Uh, and the sun and moon and the stars become uh, a, a, a symbol, visual, uh, visible from earth, a symbol within earth, within the system of, of earth that resembles the glories of heaven. That's one of the reasons why, we're call, why the firmament is called heaven uh, after it's formed in day two. It's an earthly image of heaven and the sun, moon, and stars that are put in there are an image of God and his glory with the stars uh, being uh, symbols of the sons of God, the angels that are surrounding him. And so uh, uh, in the creation week, we have this built-in analogy, this built-in metaphor uh, between the highest heaven where God is enthroned and the earthly heavens, which are the firmament. We could also say it's the barrier that lies between God's highest heaven, God's throne room where God is enthroned, uh, and the earthly realm beneath. Uh, that barrier shows up in a number of places in the Bible. Uh, when the elders Aaron and Moses feast on Mount Sinai, for example, they look up at the Lord and they look up through a pavement that looks like sapphire and up above the pavement, the pavement they see the Lord. And the Lord uh, is uh, visible to them as they eat and drink in His presence. He doesn't stretch out His hand against them and they have a meal in the presence of the Lord, but a meal with a barrier between them. Ezekiel sees a similar barrier when he sees the glory of the Lord appear uh, by the river Kibar when he's in exile. He also sees this, uh, this uh, barrier between uh, this firmament that is above the figure that he sees in the midst of the glory cloud. Um, that, that barrier is not a permanent feature of creation. This, I think, is one of the reasons why there's no pronouncement that the second day is good. We, we think that after every, everything God does, he pronounces it good creates light, separates light and darkness, that's good. He separates the waters and the land and makes the, the plants grow from the land. He says, that's good. He puts the stars, sun and moon in the heavens and he says, that's good. That's true of every day except the second day. There's no pronouncement that it's good. And I think one of the reasons for that is because that barrier that separates the throne room of God and the lower realm of man is not permanent. That's going to be shattered. We actually see a picture of this shattering in the book of Revelation. Uh, in, some pl in some places in the Bible, that firmament, which looks like a solid dome over the earth, is pictured as an ice dome. Hail is a, uh, a symbol of the shattering of that firmament, the shattering of that barrier. It can be shattered from God's side when God comes in uh, wrath against his enemies or against unfaithful Israel. He breaks through the firmament and he comes with a storm of fire, lightning, and hail. It's hail because he's breaking that, uh, that, that, uh, ice, that ice dome from above. And that's what we see in the book of Revelation. Uh, we see uh, several times where hailstorms appear, especially at the end of chapter 16 in Revelation, 
where there's a hailstorm with hailstones that are 100 pounds each. And the reason for that is because the whole story of Revelation is about the throne of God, which begins above the firmament with the sea of glass, the firmament sea, the heavenly waters in front of the throne. From that position when John first sees the throne to the position at the end of the book where God's throne has come through the firmament, shattered the ice dome, and come down to dwell on the earth. Uh, and that's, the, uh, uh, that's the, the final condition of creation, when that barrier between God and man is, is gone, the veil is lifted, and the bride and the bridegroom live in fellowship and communion forever. The creation account is, among other things, a temple building account. Uh, God is building his cosmic temple. And we can find analogies between the construction of the tabernacle by Moses, the construction of the, the temple by Solomon, and the creation week. And one of the things that's happening in both cases is the formation of boundaries. God creates boundaries between the waters above and the waters below. He makes boundaries between the land and, and the sea, the land and the ocean in, uh, on day three. Uh, God is creating and forming a world. That's what Moses and Solomon do as well when they build their sanctuaries. They form a world bound off the holy places from the profane places, bound off places that have different degrees of holiness. So we have this analogy built into the creation account between temple building and creation. And that informs our understanding of what the firmament is. I mentioned in the first episode of this series that the firmament is not just a, a shell, it's not just a flat shell, a dome above the earth, but it actually has depth. Uh, we not only know that from the creation week because the sun, moon, and stars are placed in the firmament, we also know that from several places in the Psalms where uh, the firmament, uh, that, that heavens, that visible heavens, is compared to a tabernacle. Uh, Psalm 19 tells us that the, uh, it's like a tabernacle, the Lord has made a tabernacle for the sun. And Psalm 150 begins with an exhortation to praise Him in the sanctuary and to praise Him in the firmament. There's this poetic parallel between the firmament and the sanctuary. And I think the firmament, this, this, uh, this thick, uh, barrier that corresponds to the uh, particular section of the temple, it corresponds to the holy place. The holy place is the place where we have the lampstand, that is, the, the sun, moon, and stars, the, the, the lights of heaven as the ancients understood it. The holy place is where we have bread, the bread of God. Uh, in, uh, the bread of God comes down from the sky uh, during the wilderness wanderings when it comes down as manna. God feeds Israel with the bread of angels, we're told in the Psalms. Uh, that, that's another indication that the firmament is the holy place. And then the holy place also contains an altar of incense that is a kind of ladder from the holy place into the throne room of God. So in the Old Testament, the priests, when they were, when they were doing their ministry within the holy place, were doing it in a symbolic firmament. They had ascended as far as the firmament, but they had not ascended all the way to the throne room. They hadn't gone through the final barrier into the throne room. And this, of course, is what Jesus does for us according to the book of Hebrews. He goes into the inner sanctuary. He goes into the, directly into the throne room of God, taking his own blood, having offered himself as his own sacrifice. And he makes a way for us, not just into the holy place uh, that the ancient priests entered, but he makes a way for us past the holy place so that we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. We share the throne of God. We receive the benefits and blessings and gifts of the inner sanctuary, not the, just the blessings of the firmament. We are uh, elevated above the sea, above the firmament, uh, with, uh, with Christ in glory.